Hey, I want to take a second before this video starts to tell y'all to check out The Rooftop Experience, a podcast run by my buddy Havoc Network, where me, him, and various of our friends say and do some absolutely outrageous shit. I didn't, I didn't I knew know that. that brown little, had a brown little floaty chow dick on him. I didn't know <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck is that thing on the right? I shouldn't say that. <laughs> That's um, I'm sorry. I'm so scrubs as Wilbur Robinson. Suddenly, Wilbur <laughs> is just out of my shrug television. My boombox <laughs> malfunction says playing various audio from XX. <laughs> Over on that channel, we watch memes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a bazooka. laughs> Let's see what he says. Maybe it's not that bad. Why AJ Cassini is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> We get heated and argue over shit. Dude, it's supposed to be fucking orange! Look at it! Suck my that, dick! Yeah, yeah. That, that's way more orange. Sometimes we play games. And it's very... Dude, but they're also going to get on my nerves a lot more than an ugly person would, and I'd want to fucking strangle them. If the, the engine fails while I'm flying the helicopter, there's a chance that I can land it just well enough to... I might, I might still get fucking hurt, but I have a higher chance of, of living that. In a helicopter? If the an engine Matt, I don't think you an engine failure is not the same thing as the engine just blowing the fuck up. The engine and we react to some pretty wild stuff going on on the internet. Oh hell no, yeah, no, this, no! This is long as fucking dirt. Okay, so Actually, TL, no. Uh, okay, yeah, go ahead, Andrew. I was gonna say TLDR, the nigga, the nigga is innocent. He's just weird. That's literally it. He's just weird as shit. If you enjoy my content and want to see me in a raw, unfiltered unscripted format be pure unadulterated dumbass head over there and subscribe to the channel the podcast is also on spotify so if you want to listen to us be pure head asses while you're driving or something now you can a link to the channel and the spotify are in the top of the description down below now without further ado on to the video Yo, what's the Ruddy's boy Jet here, and games are an interesting thing. There are many different types of games that all play very differently, whether it be RPGs, fighting games, shooters, racing games, platformers, musou games, and so much more. These games even have their own unique takes on their respective genres, whether it be shoot 'em up shooting games like Galaga or third person shooters like Splatoon, turn based RPGs like Persona, tactical RPGs like Fire Emblem, or action RPGs like Kingdom Hearts, 2D fighters like King of Fighters, 2.5D fighters like Blaze Blue, or 3D fighters like Tekken. There's so many different ways to take a game and the way it plays, but just as important as the game itself is the controller, which is the tool used to play a game, whether it be a motion controlled one like a Wii Remote, a mouse and keyboard, or an ordinary pro controller like an Xbox controller or PlayStation's DualShock, well, when the PS5 released, they changed from the DualShock to the DualSense, and to get people acclimated with some of the changes made to the controller and how it functions, they had Team Sobi a game called Astro's Playroom, and that's what we are here to talk about today. Let's talk about it, shall we? So, for anyone who's not familiar, Team Asobi was once a team that was part of a Japan studio, a studio that was collected of various different teams before the dissolvement in 2021, and as a whole, they're responsible for some of Sony's best products, like Gravity Rush, Ape Escape, Shadows of the Colossus, and so much more. Team Asobi was one of the studios that came from Japan's studio, and it actually previously developed Captain Astro Rescue Missions, a PlayStation VR game where you play as Captain Astro with the goal of rescuing his crew. This game is actually a sequel to that PSVR game, but you don't actually need to play that one to play this one. It's more so a sequel in the sense that it uses the same characters and a similar gameplay style, being a 3D platforming game where you play as Captain Astro and Astrobot. You can jump, however, by pressing the jump button while in the air, punch enemies and objects, as well as charge your punch to do a spin attack. You also get a little tutorial about the controls when you boot it up. The game consists of four main worlds, each based off a core part of the PS5 system and representing an era of PlayStation products. Memory Meadow contains PS1 era products, SSD Speedway contains PS2 era stuff, Cooling Springs represents stuff in the PS3 era, including things like the PSP and PS Vita, which I know most people usually associate with the PS4, but the re Vita released in 2011 and 2012 respectively around the world. The PS4 didn't release until 2013, thus making the Vita a PS3 era product. It even works with the PS3, so it makes sense that it's incorporated in here. Speaking of PS4 though, that area is represented by GPU Jungle. Each world is split into four connecting sections, two of which with different platforming challenges and enemies, and the other two have you traversing with the four different power suits in the game to traverse different challenges, each one getting a specific suit. 
GPU jungle gets a monkey suit, SSD speedway gets a spaceship suit, Colonel Spring gets a frog suit, and Memory Metal gets a ball suit, and these worlds are accessed through CPU Plaza, which serves as the game's hub world and has its own little platform challenges and whatnot. You can interact with the different Astro Bars, the CPU in the center will follow you, if you hit the little glass tank in the center it'll hit back, it's all really cool. All the worlds you play through in the game contain various collectibles, those being puzzle pieces and artifacts. The artifacts are all huge products from each respective era, and at the end of each world you get a big artifact for the big PlayStation console of each era. The backgrounds even have little neat style changes to reflect each console, and the music when you get there is remixes of their respective starter themes. The, pl the puzzle pieces, however, are for a giant mural that can be found in the PlayStation Labo area in the CPU Plaza, which is where all the artifacts are kept. At the start, it's all covered up, but the more you progress, the more you fill it up, and then you collect more of these puzzle pieces, and so on and so forth, So eventually, the room is filled with different PlayStation products, and the full puzzle and mural is completed, and it looks awesome, featuring different PlayStation games, consoles, and whatnot. It's, it's, it's amazing. By the way, collecting coins in this game is important, because in this room, you can find this little gacha room with a gacha machine, and it has a ton of puzzle pieces and artifacts in it, ones that can't be found in the different worlds. Silver capsules have miscellaneous things that can add to the room, like this Astro Bot with the OG PlayStation logo, that if you hit it in the actual room, it would cause a sign to fall over this in the previous version of it. And the puzzle pieces have secret ones. Eventually, though, if you get them all, you get this neat little firework animation of the PlayStation button icons before getting sent off. Also, there are various different types of enemies, such as spiked enemies, which you have to punch the same way as regular enemies, electric enemies, which you either need to bait into hitting the ground so you can pull their plugs, or hover over as they're covered in electricity, flying enemies, which you need to bait into hitting the ground, and so on. The name also has some interesting boss fights, and they're all very unique and fun to play in their own way. It's really cool how different each of the boss fights are, in fact, they're all a solid challenge is pretty cool. No, that's not all, as after you beat each world, a box in the basement of CPU Plaza will get one of the PlayStation buttons on the center, after beating the fourth one, the box is full, and the plaza goes completely dark. Now, the Astro Box will crowd the box, all the different expressions, from fear to excitement. And when you go in, it takes a fifth and final world, known as 1994 Flashback, which really just consists of a PlayStation 1 console that you interact with, with build a series of steps that build up to a boss fight with a T-Rex with two phases, the first being a regular T-Rex boss, but after beating it, you have a second phase with a robot T-Rex that you have to fight and it's a dope ass boss fight. It's actually a bit of a challenge and during the second phase, it even goes from a 4x3 aspect ratio to a 16x9 and the way the background even changes from the black void to the storming ocean, it's so cool. But after beating it, the game ends with Astro and a space background that you can play through as credits pop up and the game's theme plays in the background, it's, it's neat, it's great. Funny enough, after the credits play, you get sent to a new area that's just different paths where you get the artifacts of the PS5 which are added to the PlayStation Libel area. Yo, what are you Jet here? And at the time of me editing this, Timo Sylvie has actually updated Astro's playroom with a special Astro Bot hidden in GPU Jungle as a Bloodborne reference. In order to find it, you go over to the Bloodborne reference near the start of the Render Forest area, charge and perform a spin attack near this bush here, and then the bot will appear. Hover over to it and a clock will appear. Go back and travel up the, th the tree platforms until you come to this spot on one of the trees with the clock. At first it seems like you can't do anything since punching in and whatnot doesn't do anything, but if you press the pause button, a clock will appear and you'll be prompted to input a date. The date you want to put in is 24-11-15, the release date for the Old Hunters DLC in Bloodborne, and then the bot, which is just like Lady Maria from the Old Hunters DLC, will be set free. You'll get one of the new trophies that they added, that being hunted down. There are three others, but you can't get them yet as the bots for them haven't been added to the game yet, but they will be added as we get closer to Astro Bot's release date. There's also a special room underneath the PlayStation Labo room with the D-pad roof. Special gacha items have been added to the gacha room of the PlayStation Labo, and they all have rainbow gacha orbs, which is sick. And are all PS5 era products released after the PS5 came out, all of which can be found in the secret room underneath the room once you get them, as well as a room connected to this one where you can find the special hidden boss that you find, as well as keep up with the release date for the game. Team also be put some putting in some fucking crazy work, dude. This is amazing. Holy shit. <laughs> Anyways, back to past me. Bye. And that's not everything though, as there's also Network Speedrun, which is really a time trial with eight different challenges, four of the different power suits, and four for just basic running and platforming challenges. The game also has like a ton of trophies for you to get throughout your playtime. I've actually 100% completed the game and got the Platinum Trophy, because this game is genuinely just that fun. 
But even more than having a bunch of trophies, this game is chock full of references to different PlayStation things. Gravity Rush, Resident Evil, Ape Escape, God of War, Uncharted, Fat Princess, Medieval, Death Stranding, Heavy Rain, Crash Bandicoot Ace, Combat, Bloodborne, Ghost of Tsushima, Infamous, FF7, Silent Hill 2, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Killzone, DMC, MGS, Castlevania, Little Big Planet, and that's just some of the fucking references. Hell, the PS fucking, uh, the fucking Dino boss fight, the T-Rex boss fight, that's literally based on a PS1 tech demo, dude. This game is just chock full of references to PlayStation's history as a whole, featuring both super famous PlayStation things and some lesser known aspects, and it's amazing. This game as a whole just feels like one massive celebration of PlayStation as a whole, and it's really cool to see just how many different PlayStation products they pulled for. The game is amazing, not just as a nostalgia trip and a trip to the past, but as a game in and of itself. And frankly, with the announcement of the game getting a full, proper sequel in the form of Astrobot, which is scheduled to release this September actually, I'm really excited to see what they have to do with this game, because it's supposed to be even bigger than this, with more trophies, collectibles, references, and so on. I honestly can't wait to see what Team Alsobi has in store for Astrobot. But, with all that being said, I'm going to stop wasting your time now. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And if you didn't, you can tell me how much I suck about the YouTuber and the VTuber in the comment section down below. Peace out and enjoy yourself.